Hi everyone, it's Kim Valpney, The Vagina Coach. And in this video, we are going to work on our legs and our glutes. And they are all exercises that will feel more accessible during a time when you might feel symptomatic, especially from the heaviness of pelvic organ prolapse. For the equipment that we're gonna be using, I have a loop resistance band. The one I have is Tabby Nix. These are my favorite. Uh, I am using my stability ball. You don't have to have a stability ball for this workout. Um, you could use a chair or an ottoman, uh, an ottoman as well. And if you want to add a little bit of resistance to one of the other exercises that we're gonna do, the bridge, you could have a sandbag or a dumbbell close by, but again, you can do it without equipment as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I have my band, my loop band. What I like about these ones too, I like the ones that have the grippy elastic on the inside so that they stay on your, they grip to your pants and they don't slide all over. So that's what I like about this one. So we're gonna start out with, uh, I'm just sitting in a neutral pelvis, the band around my thighs, and we're just gonna press out and then relax back in. So these are just uh, working really on those lateral hip, the deep glute muscles. And if you wanted to add the core breath here, you could. So you could exhale to engage, press out, inhale, release as you come back into the middle. So that's up to you if you wanna add that. I'm not purposely adding my core breath here. I'm just going through the motions, letting my pelvic floor respond as it needs to. And checking in with your posture. So you just wanna make sure that you're in a neutral pelvis position with a gentle curve in your low back. Neutral pelvis in most cases is where the vulva and the two sit bones are on the surface of the chair as opposed to being tucked under with your tailbone on the surface of whatever it is that you're sitting on. And you wanna sit up nice and tall. We wanna make sure that we're not thrusting our ribs forward or that we're not collapsed. So just thinking of a nice tall sternum, so a string through the top of the head. And I'm just gonna do as many as I can, as many reps as I can of these until I feel like I need to take a break. That might be 10 reps, it might be 15. I've actually lost count, which is what I'm famous for. But let's just work until we feel like we can't work anymore. So this is getting a little bit tired. I've got probably three or four of these left and then we're gonna move on to the next exercise. Okay, let's do two more and done. Okay, so we're now gonna do a hip thrust. Like the bridge, if you wanted to add some weight or some resistance to this, you can. I like to use sandbags for these, but again, you can use a dumbbell and you can also use no resistance. The band around the legs, I'm just keeping it there just because we, we just used it. Uh, we don't actually need it for this exercise, but you can have it. So if you're using a ball, we're gonna roll down into the hip thrust position. If you don't have a ball, if you're using an ottoman, you're just going to bring the, basically just above your shoulder, sorry, just above your bra strap, in between your shoulder blades, you're gonna bring that to the edge of your ottoman or your couch, or if you have a bench, you can use that too. And if you are gonna use some sort of resistance, you're gonna lift it up on top of our thighs and then we're gonna come down into our hip thrust position. I'm actually gonna move the ball back just a little bit. Woo, give myself a bit of runway. So I want my feet to be pelvis width apart and again, kind of just above my bra strap, even though the, there's a bigger surface area on the ball. I'm gonna tuck my chin forward. I've got my weight on my thighs. I'm gonna lower my hips down and then I'm gonna press my hips up. I do like to add the core breath here. So I'm gonna exhale, engage and then press up. Inhale, release the pelvic floor as you come back down. So as many reps as we can here. And again, you can absolutely do this without any weight. You also don't need the band, but just because I had it on there, I left it on. We're gonna use it for a few other exercises as well. Coming up into that tabletop position. So you don't wanna thrust up too, too high. We're just coming up to the point where the hips are basically in line with the knees. Okay. 
can squeeze your glutes as well here. You don't really have to to feel the activation, but if you want to add another little glute activation, you can. I think I got about four or five more here. I think it sounds like I'm farting when I'm doing this, but it's the, the rubber on the, <laughs> the band that's squishing as I press up. Okay, I'm gonna move that off to the side. Now we're gonna go into frogs. I'll turn around this way. So again, you don't need a ball. I like the ball for this exercise, but you could go over a bench or an ottoman. Your hands are gonna be down on the ground and I'm going to bring my heels together. Now the band is adding another layer here of intensity, but essentially the exercise is to squeeze the glutes and press your, your hips upwards, your, your heels upwards, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, then lower back down. Adding the core breath, exhale to engage. And you can exhale to engage just before you move or just as you move or you don't add the core breath at all. So it's up to you. Really getting a nice squeeze and activation into those hips. The glutes in particular. Nice strong glutes are helpful for the pelvic floor. So it's good to build up strength and resiliency in those muscles. And sometimes lower body work feels a little bit intimidating or scary when we are dealing with prolapse. So if we feel a little bit inhibited or nervous, these exercises may feel a little more available to you, might feel a little bit less intimidating. And they're gonna give you a whole lot of bang for your butt. Keeping those hips, or sorry, the heels pressed together also increases that activation. I think I got about four or five more here. Let's do one more. Whew. And come on down. So now we are gonna Put the ball off to the side. I'm gonna keep the band around our thighs and we're gonna move into our clam. Hopefully that stays put. We're gonna come onto our side. I'm gonna cradle my head in my arms. I'm gonna have my hips stacked, my knees stacked, my ankles stacked, and my heels are in line with my bum. So I'm about a 45 degree angle. This would be 90, so we wanna to come to about half of that, 45. The ankles are gonna stay pressed together and the movement is to press up into the band and then lower back down. If you wanna add the core breath. And again, you can do it with the activation. or you can just allow the pelvic floor to respond on its own. This is one that I feel like I do. I like to add core breath in ones where I feel a little bit more vulnerable, but also in ones where I feel like I feel the activation more. When I do squats, I do feel a little bit, like I do feel like that's an exercise I want to have my pelvic floor really activated on, but I also don't feel my pelvic floor as much in that position. And so mine is not always a reason of, you know, this exercise is more challenging, therefore I always will add the core breath. It's sometimes it's just about 
enjoying an opportunity where I actually feel the activation of my pelvic floor more in the movement. The band in this exercise really ups the ante and the range of motion is not very big at all. And you really feel that burn in that deep hip muscle. Ooh, I think I got one more here. And of course I have to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, flipping ourselves over. I also like that I can feel, because of the placement of my hands here, you don't have to have them there, you can have them on the floor, but I can feel with my fingertips the activation of my deep abdominal muscles as well when I activate my pelvic floor. So there's that gentle tensioning underneath my fingertips. Some people benefit from some additional cueing to activate the transverse even more. So I get them to activate pelvic floor first and then you can think about maybe closing the book or drawing the belly button to spine or imagining a guy wire between the two points that you want to tension. And of course this side, because we worked this leg first and now I'm using it as a bit of a support on the ground, I still feel this leg getting fatigued as well, more so than I did when I was on my first side. I think I got about three or four more here. Last one. Now I'm coming on to my hands and my knees, gonna keep the band on. And now I'm gonna do glute. So just pressing my heel up. And again, this is really where I live. I love having the elasticized band on the inside of my resistance band. So I'm gonna press the heel up and down. If you wanna add the core breath. So on this, again, we're feeling it in that supporting leg, almost more for me anyway. It's almost like I'm feeling more work in this leg than I am the actual pressing up leg. Uh, I got two more here. Ugh. And of course now I have to do the other side. So I feel like this one I might even feel even more. Okay, I'm gonna do two more here. And last one. Now I'm gonna go down into my back and I'm gonna do a bridge. If you want to have resistance to add, you're welcome to. You can do this without resistance. You can also do this without the band. If you want to add resistance, we're gonna put it onto our pelvis. So usually when I'm lifting something onto me, I like to pre-contract my pelvic floor. So basically do a core breath prior to lifting, just as I would if I was lifting something heavy. Get my, my sandbag in this uh, case positioned. Feet are pelvis width apart, shins are vertical. Pelvis is in neutral. Inhale and expand. Exhale. Press up. And again, you don't have to add the core breath here if you don't want to. 
or you can add the core breath as you press up. I may start calling this my fart bag because it sounds like I'm farting all the time. I'm not sure if you can hear it. And I think I'm gonna do a little burnout round here as well. So I'm gonna do five more reps and then I'm gonna hold it at the top and I'm gonna do a bunch of tiny pulses until I can't take it anymore. Okay, last one. Holding it up here. Now I'm gonna do tiny pulses. And this is a good way to train the quick release, contract release aspect of the pelvic floor. So the, the reaction time for coughs and sneezes and jumps and that type of thing. Let's do three more, one, two, and three. Okay. I don't know about you, but I think I can do another round. So let's do round two of that same routine, coming onto the ball, getting yourself positioned, and here we go, pressing out and in. So it's likely that you will not do quite as many reps if you counted the first time. I'm, again, just going through this routine as sort of a as many as I can with good form and then moving on with very little rest in between to the next exercise. But I generally will do less reps in this one, getting a little bit more fatigued. Maybe if I smile, it'll make it a little easier. Okay, I'm reaching the end point here. Let's do five more. Okay, onto our hip thrusts. Pre-contract the pelvic floor, lifting it up. This is about 20 pounds. Um, Again, there's no magic weight, but it is important to, I'm gonna move over actually a little bit more this way. We want to add some challenge. So your challenge can be higher reps with less rate, weight, or it can be a little bit heavier. And lifting heavy weight is, is good for us. It's good for our bones. It's good for our muscles. It's good for our mind, but sometimes heavy feels scary with prolapse. This exercise makes it a little less scary. And this is also if you happen to have a workout buddy, they can put the weight on your pelvis, on your hips for you. So when we're working out at home, we don't have squat racks and bars for things like chest press. So we have to factor in how we get into and out of a position with weight. And that could sometimes indicate how much we can lift. So having a workout buddy is really good. Accountability, joy, and someone who can count for you. I'm done. <laughs> Somebody who can lift the heavy weight for you as well. Okay, coming over and doing our frogs. Get that out of the way. Getting into your position. 
heels together. And here we go. here. And you're done with the ball. Okay, coming down into the clam. You got about five more here. One, two, three, four, and the last one. Switching over to the other side. One of the ways that you can help manage prolapse symptoms and provide support to organs that have shifted out of their position is with a pessary. And a lot of people ask me if they should be wearing their pessary during their exercise and I say absolutely because it can, first of all, again, provide support to the organs, can prevent any, if there is any downward pressure from our lifting. It can help support the organs. And because it alleviates, like it, it repositions things to some extent, it can also allow the pelvic floor a little bit different and sometimes better opportunity to work. So it may help improve the capacity of the pelvic floor. Whew. Two more here. One and two. And now we're gonna move into our glute presses. And then we'll finish off with our bridges and then we'll be done. Okay. Three more here. And last, well, that was the last one. Now moving over, last set on this side. one. Okay, grabbing my bag for my bridges, the final exercise, then we will be done. Okay, and here we go. Exhale. Get your weight positioned if you're using it. Feet pelvis width apart. Shins vertical, pelvis in neutral. And here we go.
and do two more and then we'll end with the pulses. Staying up here. Now quick contract release, contract release, contract release. Last two, and last one. And we are done. So I hope you found that challenging while also feeling a little safer if it's on a day that you might, might feel a little bit more symptomatic with your prolapse. In honor of Prolapse Awareness Month, which is every June, I hope you found this helpful and we will see you next time. Bye.